Oh, how times have changed. In the past, I avoided calling myself a fantasy fan because people were judgmental. Nowadays, it's the reason is kinda different. Greetings, my name is Nina, welcome back to my channel. Fact about me that has been repeated in a lot of my previous videos. My favorite genre of books is fantasy. And in this video, I want to talk yet again about fantasy. Or to be exact, complain. Now, you're probably thinking, Nina, what do you have to complain about? Gone are the days when fantasy was considered to be something shameful. Now everyone is a fan of fantasy. Everybody reads those books uh, these days. It's more popular than ever. Yes, that's true. Then what's the issue, you want to ask? Short answer, the idea of the fantasy genre and its fans is heavily skewed these days. I have stated my reason, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Just kidding, of course. Short answers come in handy, but YouTube videos are about long answers. Now, I am warning you, throughout this video you might think your takes are kinda questionable, and yeah, that probably is true. But one of the reasons I have a YouTube channel is discussions. I like discussing topics that seem interesting to me, even if I don't always succeed at selecting the right words. And I do try to be careful with my words. Maybe I lack the knowledge or something, or maybe I should have worded that something differently. But still, I like discussion. And after all, and after all, I've stated in my previous videos that 2024 would be about video rants and discussions, the scripted videos. And here I am making them. And now allow me to voice the long answer. Now, before we dive deep, allow me to ask you a very simple question. What is fantasy to you? What comes to your mind when you think of the genre? Maybe Lord of the Rings, the father of all the fantasy? Or or maybe Harry Potter, Narnia, A Song of Ice and Fire, Brandon Sanderson books, or maybe you do not think of a certain book series or even author, but you think of a subgenre or even a cliche or atmosphere or something. Either way, I'm sure for the average person, the answer would be the books that I have mentioned earlier. But that's on average, because uh, yeah, everyone knows these books. Well, at least they definitely know Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter and uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, even if they haven't read them. Everybody has heard of these series. Like I mentioned in my connections between fantasy and heavy metal videos, fantasy has uh, multiple subgenres, and every reader can select books that fit their taste. Fantasy has evolved a lot after Tolkien in many ways. As especially in the 21st century. There are so many amazing fantasy books written these days. Very cool! Let's keep the genre alive! Yay! Then uh, what does uh, bother me? Why do I keep saying that the idea of fantasy books and its fans is skewed these days? Well, I blame BookTok and BookTube for this. Yeah, okay. These are the very different things, but in this case they are basically one thing. Therefore, I'm going to name book talk and book talk a book T. I'm too lazy to pronounce book talk and booktube. I will only separate them when relevant. And book T's are the people making videos for book talk and booktube. I have a video on my channel named the things I dislike about booktube. Now I'm not going to complain about booktube. I already did that and I don't want to repeat myself. After all, I've stated in that video that th that was a once-in-a-lifetime video. The points that I made in that video are still relevant. Feel free to check that video out. There's one point that I overlooked in that video. Seriously, I did not even consider that point when I was writing the script back in November 2023. And in this video, I'm going to address that point. My concern is how a lot of book teas have altered the perception of fantasy genre and fantasy fans, or at least started doing so. In the booktube video, 
I mentioned that book cheese favor heavily the young adult genre. Young adult is a combination of multiple different genres that is mostly aimed at teens. There's young adult mystery, there's young adult horror, there's young adult dystopia, and young adult fantasy. It's hard for me to pronounce YA. Obviously, my focus is on the latter, the YA fantasy. Or rather, its effect. I save a lot of uh, book-themed uh, videos to my watch later playlist on YouTube, all of them made by various different channels. I watch these videos and see the same books in almost every video, especially when it comes to the fantasy genre. Almost every one I watched favored a certain uh, author or a certain fantasy series. You have probably heard of them and you know who I'm talking about. Look, your bookshelf is your business. Don't tell anyone what you can or what you can't read. I've had it happen to me and I hated it. As you can see, I listen to no one on what I must read because I'm rebellious, kind of. My point here that given the popularity of certain authors and certain series and certain subgenres, a different view on fantasy and fantasy fans is slowly being normalized. It's not happened yet, I guess, but it's slowly happening. It seems like these days when you claim to be a fantasy fan, you are automatically assumed to be a young adult fantasy fan. At least if you are a booktuber. Apparently, a fantasy in minds of booktubers is a young adult fantasy by default. The reason I am stating this is because I watched uh, some YouTubers claim they loved fantasy, they were huge fans of fantasy and so on, and guess what they showed, what type of books they showed in their videos? You got that right, YA. Other, other fantasy books, who cares about them? Now, don't get me wrong, I mentioned in my fantasy and heavy metal video that fantasy genre is versatile and it comes in different shapes and forms. High fantasy, classic fantasy, dark fantasy, urban fantasy, and YA. And fantasy can be epic, it can be dark, it can rely on magic more, some books rely on magic less, some books cover certain themes, other don't, and uh, you got the point. The young adult fantasy is fantasy. But is it a default fantasy? I don't think so. It's kind of like saying you are a metalhead and saying that the metalcore bands are the default bands. Nothing against metalcore here, it's simply the first thing that came to my mind. When you are a newbie metalhead, you go to Black Sabbath first and Iron Maiden. Well, that's what I did when I started diving deep around 2014. I still remember when I had a uh, time of university in February 2014, and I spent uh, the whole month studying the discographies of Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden, and partly Judas Priest. Now, you probably get my point that I'm not a huge fan of uh, young adult fantasy becoming the default, and that if you are a booktuber, you are automatically a young adult fantasy fan. Guess what? In the last one or two years, I only read around four young adult books, and none of them were fantasy. Now, of course, fantasy fans have their own favorite subgenres of fantasy. I recognize that classic fantasy, like The Last Unicorn, is uh, definitely my thing. I like classic fantasy for its atmosphere, and it seems to be kind of warmer than modern fantasy. It's much more uplifting. Okay, that's a topic for another video, but I do lack the coziness and the warmth and the hope and the good that classic fantasy has that modern fantasy does not have that much. It seems that everything has to be morally grey, and I'm not a fan of that. But that's a topic for another video. I'm still trying to find the correct words for the video. I also recognize that fantasy sometimes can be predictable. Lots of cliches, tropes, and badly written works. Yeah, it happens. Just like in any other genre. After watching some booktube videos, I noticed how some booktubers promote books, including young adult fantasy, in short, with a heavy reliance on cliches and tropes. Sure, technically every book consists of tropes, but that's just a technical level. In my opinion, uh, this is a quite questionable method of uh, promoting books. 
I think uh, focusing on the plot and the characters is much more important than focusing on uh, certain tropes. Well, that's what I did for my own uh, novel. I focused mostly on the plot. And uh, focusing on the tropes, well, uh, it can be a hit or miss. Don't get me wrong, I'm not necessarily calling it a bad thing, but it definitely can be a hit or miss. And promoting every book on uh, based on tropes is, um, yeah questionable. But what do I know? People like predictable points in books, apparently. I might be old-fashioned or something, I guess. Originally, I started scripting this video to claim that a lot of people, well, at least on booktube, have a different perception of fantasy and fantasy fans these days. In short, fantasy is by default young adult fantasy, but especially books that are popular on TikTok. Spoiler, that's incorrect. In short, this is still the main point of the video. However, while uh, writing the script, I suddenly understood another problem, which is also related to the topic of this video, even though it goes beyond the fantasy genre, it affects uh, nearly all genres. The search of samey stuff coming from readers. I mean that readers search for same thing over and over again. You'd argue by saying, but the publishers want profits, yada yada yada. Well, this video isn't about publishers. I'm talking exclusively about the readers. Yes, my focus is on the readers, including book teas, because book teas are also regular readers, it's just that they have a platform to talk about uh, books. And this is where I want to talk about the phenomenon called comfort fiction. We readers love escapism very much. We, I mean, not only fantasy readers, but the readers in general. Unless you are the type of person who only reads uh, serious self-help books in order to learn something, chances are that you read books for fun and joy and comfort. I'm sure you have your comfort fiction. Most people do. And so do I. But what is exactly comfort fiction? For different people, it may mean different things. For some people, it's a fiction full of fluffy content where happy endings are present all the time. For others, uh, it can be an entire genre of books that is comforting or subgenre of books. For another category of people, it can be a certain author who is comforting, no matter what he or she writes. For me, comfort fiction is a set of multiple different books that brings you joy no matter how many times you listen to them. Oh, sorry, I wanted to say read them. I was thinking about music. Well, because, yeah, I have uh, comfort bands and I will talk about uh, comparison to music a bit later. And here's what comfort fiction apparently means to a certain type of people, according to me, of course. Especially if these people happen to be book teas. Correct me if I'm wrong. For such people, uh, comfort fiction is a combination of books within the same genre or genres that are similar to one another. And this, this is where the power of tropes shines the most. I guess people fall in love with tropes so much they are ready to search for books that are copy and paste of a book that they loved so much. Who cares if the content of the books uh, it can be a bit questionable, well, because it's mostly copy and paste of that one book. But the tropes, but the familiarity, but the comfort, blah 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 blah. As for March 2024, I have 28 favorite books with the different levels of comfort for me. And these are the books I would love to read again, and none of them are similar to each other, even if they have the same elements. Even if some of these books have the same elements. Seriously, if a certain book brings you joy to the point that you can stop thinking about it even a year or two after you have read it, then such book is worth reading again isn't it? Why search for cheap copycats? I'd read that uh, one comfort book multiple times over and over again, or at least uh, read uh, again some parts of it, then search for a book that is uh, similar to said book. Sure, I can search uh, 
uh, for a book with similar theme or concept, but that's all. For example, I love music themes and you can explore them from multiple angles. This doesn't mean that every single book is the copy of the other. But here's the thing, I'm after co a concept or a theme not uh, tropes. I never think of searching for a book based on tropes. I don't even think of tropes at all. As you can see, I value originality. Well, at least to a certain extent, both as a reader and as a writer. I can adopt somebody else's concept or a theme, but the rest, the rest I come up with on my own. Yes, it's absolutely okay to adopt a certain concept to be the core of your novel. It's absolutely fine to revisit the same concept again in your next novel, as long as you follow one simple rule. Each interpretation of said concept should be different and you, in the process, have to find your own way. Well, take Robert Jordan, for example. When you read The Eye of the World, the first book in the Wheel of Time series, you can notice that uh, Jordan took a lot of inspiration from Tolkien and certain plot points, they do remind of Fellowship of the Ring. However, Robert Jordan had his own ideas that uh, arose even in the first book, and in overall, Wheel of Time is completely different from Lord of the Rings. He came up with his own interpretations of certain topics. And guess what? So did a lot of other authors who took inspiration from Tolkien, including me. The process of finding ideas for your books is uh, a concept for another video. I think I should uh, make it in the future. Now we're slowly coming to an end. The reason I'm addressing this is because that there might be a chance that young adult fantasy may be the reason that all the other subgenres of fantasy might be overlooked, at least, at least by big booktubers. Obviously, fantasy is a versatile genre and other subgenres are here to stay. They are obviously not going anywhere and of course they are going to be people people like me who have YouTube channels who are going to promote said books. But I don't like how certain booktubers with big audiences act like young adult is the default and other subgenres are optional. I guess they think that young adult is the only subgenre that matters. And in my humble opinion, booktubers and booktalkers both have the power to influence uh, people's uh, reading habits. Sure, it happened to me, certain booktubers influenced me, and uh, I guess I'm doing the same thing by making videos, and you probably would watch some of my videos, and uh, then go to a bookstore and uh, buy some books that I promoted. With great power comes the great responsibility. Yeah, thanks, Uncle Ben. These are very wise words. All right, enough with me ranting. I think I made my point clear. Fantasy is fantasy no matter the subgenre, but young adult isn't above uh, other subgenres and it definitely does not come first. Sorry, young adult fans, young adult books aren't the default of the whole fantasy genre. In addition, one solid comfort book outweighs multiple mediocre uh, books that are similar to it each other and that one a uh, comfort book yeah it definitely reminds me of music in many ways for example i think if you watched my previous videos you probably know that i am a big uh, blind guardian fan and the reason i'm bringing th them up here is because first of all i can and the second is that the most common criticism I heard about them is that the later albums are completely different from their 90s stuff. And that's true, definitely. I listened to Nightfall in Middle Earth and yeah, I kind of understood where old school fans ca are coming from. However, then I encountered some bands that uh, while, while they were cool in sound, they sounded way too similar to 90s Blind Guardian. And then I was like, if I want to listen to albums that sound like their 90s stuff, I would listen to their actual 90s stuff. Thank you very much. They're still solid. They're still relevant. They're still very cool. And they're here to stay. Yeah, that's a music example. And I feel the same about books. Yeah, I noticed uh, a year ago that there are a lot of similarities between books and music. 
and feel free to check out not only my fantasy and hair metal video, but also the podcast where I talk about book talk and mainstream music. Funny enough, I noticed that those booktubers who love the young adult books and whatever was popular on book tea were also into some mainstream artists whose names I don't want to share here. No, this isn't a call out. This is simply an observation. This is just an observation. No disrespect to anybody here. I just noticed there's a coloration and it kind of proves the points of my two videos. All right, that's all. I think that this is a very interesting topic to discuss. What do you think? Is there something I missed or I should have addressed differently? Maybe I'm even thinking too much into it, but who knows? Feel free to share your opinion down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this little rant. Goodbye.